All right. Well, thanks for coming, guys. So our class is Don't Get Beaten by a Binzer. Uh, we are Copper State Binzer Repair. I'm going to show you a quick video that kind of tells you why I think we're qualified to teach this class. I think I have a good Do you have an app? We do not have an app. But you learned this today. <laughs> they, ma they answer the email so it's not for anything that people have to Oh, hey, what's that? Imagine the guy just walking in the street and you are. There you go. Okay. We we're going to show you guys a video. Buffering. You guys didn't hear it? No. Oh, let's grab the video. You guys are on the dose, though, right? Uh, I was, yeah, a while back. Yep. Um, all right, so we're Copper State Binger Repair. To give you an idea of what we do, it's not what the class is about, but I feel like you need a little bit of story of who we are and why I feel like we can help you guys with your bingers. So we see a couple hundred bingers a month at this point from all different agents. Uh, so we've learned a few things about what's a good binger and then what's not so good. I can tell you, unfortunately, we see more not so good versus good. There's also a direct correlation between the people that write a good binger to what we actually see get accepted and that's being negotiated uh, on behalf of the client. So um, our hope for the class today is that we can show you a few things that we've learned um, to help you guys write better binzers. Uh, a couple things, I think a binzer is one of the most complicated documents in the real estate process transaction. Um, and it's only a two page document, which is interesting. I think a big reason why we see so many issues with uh, a binzer is there's, there's blank lines, right? We all know that when you give us as real estate agents blank lines, we're gonna put some stuff on there that sometimes may or may not make sense. Um, I can say that because Katie and I are both realtors. So this whole company evolved out of a need just to serve my clients better. Um, and I think Katie was just tired of me always complaining about not having somebody to give me a quote and then if I could find somebody to give me a quote, not having somebody that we could trust to do the work. You guys know that our clients rely on us a lot to be that resource to provide a vendor. You probably also know what happens when that vendor doesn't perform. It's not on the vendor, it's on you. It's a poor reflection of you. So we're very conscious of that, of who our guys are, who our techs are, making sure that ultimately we're making you guys look good and bring more value to your client. Um, that's how it was created. Katie's like, well, uh, I think I can start doing these estimates and uh, I know somebody that, that can do the work. And it just kind of evolved from there and realized, hey, if this is something that we need and that we're utilizing inside of our business and our team, this would probably help a lot of other realtors. So that's how we got to where we are. Um, another thing on what is a Benzer? So a Benzer is not B-E-N-S-R. It is not B-I-N-Z-R because we'd be amazed at how many times we see that come through. We don't even know what the document is called. Uh, just like the spuds is not potatoes. You guys probably seen this one. <laughs> uh, again, we feel it's one of the most misused documents in the transaction. Um, our goal for this class is to not tell you the, the legal side of maybe what you should or exactly how you should word things. We're just want to present to you what we see is working versus what's not working. Um, so three, three tips for writing a better binzer. First is use accurate verbiage. We'll go into all of these. Second, be specific. The third is keep it simple. These are also like very similar, ironically, to goal setting, right? Mm -hmm. So accurate verbiage. Great words to use, repair or replace. It's pretty much about the extent 
of what I feel and what we feel should probably be presented on a banquet. Anything outside of that, not really sure what the end result is that you're after for the client. We see these words all the time. Fix, remedy, inspect, investigate, damage, non-functioning, check, correct. So crystal clear verbiage, repair. I think most of you guys can figure this out, but in our world, what this usually means is it's just that. It's a repair using existing material. It's very unlikely if you request a repair, you have to look at what the seller is trying to do. They're trying to sell the house. They're going to do it as cheap as possible to sign off on what's agreed to. Great example, repair frozen angle stop at kitchen sink. Most of us know that most of those times that angle stop is not always frozen. If the inspector sees any resistance, they're not turning that valve because they don't want to be the one to snap it off. A lot of times our guys go out there, if it says repair, they turn the angle stop. It's no longer frozen. That's a repair. But is that actually what the buyer wanted? So be very clear when you're doing repair versus replace. Repair cracked roof tile, same thing. We see this a lot come up on reinspects, and we actually ask our clients, was the intention to have that roof tile replaced, or do you want it sealed and repaired? To some people, sealed and repair is an acceptable repair. So you have to get very clear on that. What we don't want to happen, we agree to crack roof tile, buyer goes back, has their reinspection done, and they were expecting roof tiles to be replaced. So these are a lot of the pitfalls that we see. Repair roll roofing on patio. Uh, in our opinion, there is no such thing as a repair for roll roofing. If your inspector's calling out roll roofing on a patio, it needs to be replaced. You can't repair it. Replace, it's just that. Remove old and replace. So, super scary verbiage. Unfortunately, we see this a lot. Fix. What does fix mean? Who decides what fix is? Everybody's definition of fix is probably a little different. Remedy. Again, what does remedy mean to somebody? Inspect. We'll dive into to this one some more as well. Um, okay, it's inspected, yeah, it's broken. What do you want to do? Like there was no, you didn't ask for repair, you asked for it to be inspected and that's what was done. Another one we say that all the time is investigate. Investigate the AC, it's old. Cool, we investigate, you were right, it's old. We fulfilled terms of vendor, right? Damaged, noted, it, it's damaged, roger that, got it. Non-functioning. I mean, is this like an FYI statement? Mm -hmm. We see this a ton. Water heater's non-functional. All right, thanks for the update, appreciate that. We'll, we'll disclose that on the spuds, the potatoes. <laughs> check, we checked it, you're right, it's broke. Correct, again, who decides what correct is? Do you guys ever see that stuff on vendors? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I'll give you a real world example. Have sprinkler system checked. Seller did exactly that, had the sprinkler system checked. So they've now fulfilled what was agreed to per vendor. It was later found out that there was a major leak in that sprinkler pipe under the sidewalk, causing a major loss of water. It was not determined until they got the water bill. We checked the sprinkler system. And that's exactly what the landscape said he did, is he checked the system. Um, so just be really careful with that, guys. We, we see this more than you guys have probably ever believed. Another one that comes up a ton, I mentioned it, is AC to be checked. Okay, AC is checked, what does that mean? Water heater, this one you probably see a lot as well. Average lifespan of water heater is eight to 12 years. I see inspectors note this all the time. This water heater is at the end of its expected life. Okay, and then you'll see an agent that will cite that section of the report in the vendor. So you've just cited that the inspector has noted and brought something to our attention. There's actually been no repair request. You see sellers sign off on this, and then the buyer gets very upset when they go to do a reinspection, inspection, especially in the water heater. AC and water heaters and roof, uh, probably the three most common areas that you will see investigate, remedy, fix, check, non-functioning. AC is non-functioning. Okay, awesome. I guess it's hot in the summer. Like I don't, not really sure what what is meant by that. So. Be specific. The more precise you are with your repair requests, the better your results will be. Remember to think items through. What are consequences of the action you're requesting? This is another huge pitfall that we see a lot of agents make, and this is where a lot of reinspections come up, and then we're getting phone calls, hey, can you guys get out there tomorrow? We're supposed to close. Fender wasn't completed as scheduled, or as agreed to. So one that's an example that, you know, try to give you guys something that we see a lot, 
remove TV brackets. Seller, again, is going to say, okay, cool, I'll pull the TV bracket off the wall. Well, now you're left with big holes. So you may want to say something more along the lines of remove TV brackets, repair, patch, texture, paint, match current wall. Be as detailed and specific as you can. Don't just say paint. They could, technically, throw white paint on a brown wall. Have they fulfilled terms of vendor? Most people are going to argue yes, and I can tell you what happens in that situation when you have a vendor issue a day before closing. In most cases, buyer vision or buyer is the one that suffers. The seller usually doesn't have an immediate necessity of time to have to move in somewhere in 24 hours. Buyers usually do. So yes, they could delay closing, take up this fight. Will they win? Yeah, probably. But what's happened? What's the cost? Home inspector recommends smoke detectors be changed every five years. Guys, I love my home inspector. He puts this on. I've used one home inspector my entire career. Probably done over 400 inspections with him. He still puts that on there. I'm like, what does that mean? Are you telling me the home inspector that the smoke detectors that are at the property are older than five years, or are you just educating me that they should be replaced every five years, just like an AC unit should be replaced every 10 to 15 years? So by this statement, just identifying condition. The buyer, excuse me, has not identified the condition or item which they disapprove of. This is huge. Remember, there is no, they should have known what I meant clause in the vendor. We've seen this a ton. Like we have emails that come through from the other side. So our client may have been the buyer, buyer's agent. We've done the repairs per vendor, and then somebody's doing a reinspect, and that comes up. They should have known what I meant. Should we? We're psychics. We probably would not be doing vendor repairs. Be specific. Uh, I threw this in there because it's, I don't know, it's kind of funny. Did you mean specific or did you mean specific <laughs> or specific to warm the notion? Yeah. <laughs> that was Kate. Thanks, Kate. Keep things specific again. Reference inspection, report sections, picks, page numbers. This is huge. Uh, we'll show you some vendors here in a bit. You'd be amazed at how many people repair angle stops. Most houses have a lot more than one angle stop. So if we just define the first one that may or may not be broken and fix that one, like what's actually being done here? The other thing too that's really key on this, your buyer and your seller, their expectation of a repair is what the inspector has provided them. That is their knowledge, that's where they're getting their repair request and concerns from. So let the inspection report use that. Cite the sections of the report where you're expecting the repair. It sets the expectation up front, especially if you're using a company like ours or anybody else, they're gonna go in there and say, okay, I'm supposed to do this, this, and this based on an inspector's findings. That's, that's the ideal scenario. When we see stuff come through that's very specific, it allows everybody to do their job more efficiently and we don't see the go back and questions come up on the re-inspect. Um, provide detailed location at property. So here's some examples of, of some pretty good detailed Replace four damaged roof tiles on each side of the garage. This is a common one that we see a lot where replace four damaged roof tiles. So now we have a contractor that's just going to walk all over the roof and find these roof tiles. I can tell you that inspectors probably are not counting every roof tile. We see a lot of home inspection reports come through. There's at least five damaged roof tiles. Okay? Again, if you wrote the Benzer to replace five damaged roof tiles, you're going to get five damaged roof tiles replaced. This is a real world example of uh, an agent that we would all know. They agreed to do five damaged roof tiles. Our guy got on the roof, called and said, hey, there's probably about 20 more that are damaged. We fulfilled terms of vendor. We were paid to do five roof tiles. That's what we did. We brought to their attention that there's about 20 more. That's now a battle that they're fighting. Seller agreed to do five. That's what the buyer requested. So who's right, who's wrong? It was not specific. If you look back at that in the inspection report, it said there was at least five. You gotta watch these play on words. Sellers will take advantage of that play on words every time. They're cheap. They're, they're not looking to do as many repairs as they can to get out of the house. Replace uh, frozen angle stop at master bedroom sink hot side. This is very helpful. This makes it very clear for everybody. We've seen a lot of reinspects. They people go back. You guys didn't replace the angle stop. No, nope. actually, we replaced the exact angle stop you noticed. What you failed to notice is that there's two angle stops 
if every spot you have water in the place, you have a hot and cold side. We don't expect people to always know all this. Not everybody's a contractor, but if your inspection report is not noting these detailed descriptions that you can copy and paste on your vendor, may consider a different home inspector. They should be this detailed. Replace GFC outlet on west wall and garage. Again, it's pretty straightforward. Keep things extremely specific. Um, next, just keep it simple too. So over under explaining things, be very concise in your wording. Don't become a junior inspector, plumber, or electrician. Let the experts determine what is wrong and fix it. Sometimes people try to use a lot of words to make vendors sound very official. You want to write clearly, simple, plain language to get the heart of what you want done. I think we've probably seen vendors where the explanation is continued on addendum four, five, and six. Probably a reason why the vendor was created in the state of Arizona. And I think it's 12 lines, maybe it's 13 lines that you had to fill in. So be kind of conscious of that. There was a reason why they only gave you 13 lines. You shouldn't be asking for the farm here. Like you have to spend some time with your clients to be very detailed on what it is that they want, what's important to them. We'll go over some of that more. Um, let the inspection report do the talking. We kind of touched on this. Cite items in the inspection report and give reference numbers for pages, sections of the report where the item appears. Most home inspections that we see, you'll have section 13.3. Within section 13.3, there's gonna be four or five different sets of pictures and or even notes. Replace angle stop in section 3.3. There might be seven of them in there in different sections. So you're asking for 3.3 all, you're asking for section 3.3 subhead four, five, and six. So again, just keep it simple, be as clear as you can. Here's a couple of examples of some well-written vendors. Um, so take a look at this. And what do you guys see that, that kind of stands out as why we would view this with the amount of vendors we see as it being well-written? Let's get a little interaction. So the, in the section in the um, inspection, like it, it cross-references. Yep. Yep. Locations. Locations are noted. What's the verbiage that's constantly used? Place. Yep. Repair. So here's something too that I would say is one of our don't use words, inoperable GFCI receptacle. Replace. But it's finished with replace. This comes through all the time that they leave that key fact off of there, replace. So you can just cross that out, like thank you for the information, appreciate it, we'll move on to the next thing. <laughs> Exterior receptacles need GFI protection. So, I mean, it's good, it's not great. I feel it could be a little better. Uh, exterior receptacles, there's many, depending on the size of the house, exterior GFCI receptacles. So is it on the north wall, is it on the west wall by the garage? Where's it at? Um, the carbon monoxide detectors, I'll point that out again, because that seems to be a huge one that comes through as non-functioning. Non-functioning non -functioning smoke detectors. All right, if it's non-functioning, they actually ask in this case, one in your kitchen, one in hallway. And they ask for it to be installed. Pretty clear. Um, one tip for this might be to reference the inspection report, the date it was and who gave it, because okay. you just get a vendor. You could argue that how do I know what inspection report or how do you know to reference? I thought No, it is common to, to reference it this way, but on the first line, to I, reference what we yeah, report that actually yeah. was. You know, you know, these items are disapproved. You know, and they reference inspection report by home inspector so and so dated blah blah blah. I've actually had that coming through a lot, a lot more often. Yeah. Is people actually referencing what they're saying? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's my broker brain is saying. So you say you reference it on the vendor, like? No, I it's like the first uh, line. Very first lines it should say As following repairs. Or, yeah, our you know the section so S dash one four five without some how do I know what that is? Sure. Obviously it's probably attached, but if there the first line says, you know, items disapproved as indicated in home inspection dated you know August 29th by home inspector, that helps give you more reference. And is that just for like yeah, if you're going to get into an argument, you know, over something getting done or you know, kind of what he's getting at, if it's not specific, you know, 
we need this to be as specific as possible and clear. So referencing the section number is ideal, and the being exact on what you want done is also ideal, but I think it would help from a broker standpoint if you reference the home inspection report that you are citing examples from. Thank you. What do you think? I think JD's my dial broker, so I'm going to go with you. I asked JD both the questions that I have. Um, this one, oh, so this is another one that, is this one which one? Let's go to this one. So this is another good Vinzer. Um, it gets a little wordy, but it's still, it's getting the point across, and again, it's not relying too heavily on what the inspector noted. So it's very clear, right? let's look at the last line, repair, replace, leaking valves, a washing, machine supply, supply lines under sink, drain lines, upstairs bathroom sink, and kitchen sink. And then it references the section of the report. The only thing that I would challenge here is a lot of this is gonna depend on how the buyer was coached by the buyer's agent when this vendor was prepared. Is that buyer's expectation of the repair of those leaking valves to have new valves, or are they okay if it's actually just repaired? So get really clear on that with your client. If you're writing repair or replace, how can you repair the valve, the leaking valves? The bottom, you can just do O-rings. Pardon? You can get O-rings, pull the valve off, put a new O-ring on. Sometimes you'll see plumber's tape on it, that, that white tape. I mean, there's, there's usually a way it can be repaired. Again, that's fine if that's what the buyer's expectation is. Mm -hmm. It's okay. But get clear on that with your client. We always have that discussion with ours. Like, hey, if we ask them to repair a frozen valve, they're going to go turn that valve and break it free. If it breaks free and it spins, it's repaired. If you want, if you're expecting a new valve, you need to ask for a replace. Um, so I think everything else on, I mean, it, when we see vendors like this, it pretty much tells us right away, this is coming from an agent that has some experience. These are the types of vendors that we should get accepted. Do you usually put repair or replace to give them the option? Depends on the client in my world. Yeah, so I've had some clients that their expectation of a repair is that it's with brand new material. Doesn't matter what. Right, because it's number three there at the bottom one says repair or replace leaking kitchen faucet. Exactly. I just say, you know, if you want it new, then you gotta ask for it new. Exactly. If you want it prepared, yep. then you gotta ask for it new. Yeah, and that's huge, and that's why I say that's a discussion that the buyer's agent has to own, and you have to have that conversation with the client. If you're drafting this on their behalf, it is not their responsibility to understand in our world what repair versus replace means. Don't assume that, take this responsibility. This is on us as representing a buyer. Same thing when you're presenting to a seller, it goes both ways. If it says replace, you gotta tell your seller, it has to be replaced. Yes, you might be able to fix the faucet, yeah. but they asked for it to be replaced. What about, um, you know, I mean, uh, I prefer to ask for a dollar amount. Okay. I have done several on a dollar amount that way. <laughs> you always going to have something that's going to come up and go, oh, who's talking? I didn't want that, that pipe replaced. You know? yep. Well, you know, now you're back to square one with trying to figure out how to make people happy. You know? totally. Whereas when you say, okay, listen, we've got these repairs here. What do you, what do you think of this cost? That way, they can get it done from their contractor on their time when they need it done. It's not going to be held up. You don't have to go through and wait and spend closing. You know? So, uh, you know, so you, you're not alone much, in that. We, we get awarded about 20% of everything we do. I can tell you our pricing is probably better than anybody else. But why do we only get 20%? Because the other 80% is a credit negotiation. There's nothing wrong with that, right? It goes both ways. I think a lot of that depends on the client situation too. I mean, this, this goes in a little more in depth, but you know, there's situations where you may have enough closing cost coverage. So now you're getting a credit, but what, what do you do with this credit? There's some ways around that. Um, you know, we can get into that after we go through this if you guys have something else there on what we've seen done on how to have a contract that pays closing, buyer's choice. There's a lot of other ways to do this without alerting the lender. <coughs> There's been a credit given in lieu of repairs. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, it goes back to what does the buyer want? Does the buyer want the credit? Do they want to do some of the work themselves? Like, um, but do you see a lot of that happening? Do you see a lot of, a lot of credit <coughs> in, in lieu of Yep. Yeah, so we follow up with, with everybody that we submit a bid, that submits a bid request, we follow up with them just to see, like, how'd it go? Were you able to negotiate credit? Did you need to work? 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's about 80% seems like that uh, they're negotiating credit. Um, of the people that are actually conscious enough to get bid requests. I just don't know if that was Oh my hard. gosh. <laughs> we didn't have to bid too hard to buy this. That's, that's the scary part. This, was, have on, this was on a $2.8 million listing. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah, if you're happy when you said uh, investigate further. Yeah. <laughs> I'll inspect your house for that. Why? Because it, it's a CYA thing. You know, how often do you see, oh, electrical looks weird, so you should have that investigated. Plumbing looks weird, you should have that investigated. It's like, I thought that's what we paid you for. So, I mean, that's, I don't think we need to spend much of that. I guess that's a way you could send a repair request, but now you've just thrown out all the terms that are negotiated as set forth in the document called the vendor. Technically, if the seller agrees to it and signs that napkin, um, I guess it's binding. But there's a lot of FYI on here. Breaker has been double tapped. Okay, no repairs required. Thank you. We'll disclose that to the next buyer. Water heater is not equipped with a drain pan. Okay, so when you look at this, what have they actually asked to be repaired? Nothing. It's just common. Just, just, just the locks. Just the locks. That's it. They've asked for a lock adjustment. Because <coughs> I'd like to say that we don't see this very often. Uh, you know, I don't think Katie had to dig too far to find some examples of vendors that could have been done a lot better. Uh, here's something else I'll point out. We'll go over a few other things. Lack of planning does not. Lack of planning on your part does not constitute an emergency. Of I put this in here, maybe you'd be amazed, maybe not. Uh, we probably had two emails today come through. Hey, this closes tomorrow, can you get the repairs done today? On a job that we bid two months ago, or a month ago. Pretty sure you knew the closing date for a while. If you're stressed on your end about doing that, what do you think your clients are experiencing? Mm -hmm. So you're telling me that even if we do the repairs today, you still need to schedule a final walkthrough, verify those repairs, and you're okay putting your client through that. That's why this is in there. I, this is critical, guys. Like, there are resources like our company. There's other companies out there that perform a similar function. I'd like to say we're the best, but um, like, utilize this stuff. This is your responsibility as an agent. In a world where agents' jobs are being taken over by technology more and more every day, and then we see agents providing less and less value every day, and then they're also the ones complaining about their job being taken. Well, no shit, you're not doing your job. So, like, this is huge. I, I had to throw that in there. It's like beating a dead horse, but there is no shortage of everybody having an emergency. Today's the last day of our vendor. Can you send us an estimate? What have you been doing for the other nine days? Like, did you wait till day 10 to get the inspection? I get it. Sometimes that comes up. Like, just a little bit of planning. So, a couple other things I, I want to point out. Um, I, I think what... We probably should have covered it earlier. I think I missed it in my notes. But another thing that we see a lot is just these extremely lengthy VINs, um, you know, where it's continued on addendum two, and then there's a addendum three. Like I get there's a time and place where you need to have a lot of stuff. If that's what your client's asking for, okay, I get that. You're gonna do what's best. You're representing your client. What we have noticed though, a lot of times when we see repair requests come through, Clients are asking for repairs because they're scared, because they, it's lack of knowledge. They just don't know what stuff's going to cost. Again, there's resources out there. Provide them with a detailed line item estimate so they can say, like, okay, well, this is important because it's a big dollar amount. Okay? We're amazed at how many people are freaked out over an angle stop because it's a plumbing issue. Inspectors told them, oh, this is a plumbing issue. Angle stop's weekly. $60 to bid? Like, what, are we, what is an angle stop? Uh, 40, 40 bucks. But then there's roofing that's bad, AC's bad, but now they've overwhelmed the seller with all this other stuff that when the buyer actually knows what these items cost, puts them at ease, 
and they're able to actually decide more effectively on what they want faster to get from the center. Um, I fully understand too, it doesn't always go that way. I've done a lot of transactions. You're gonna have buyers that they're gonna ask, see a tax summary. Don't do that. Don't, don't put that on the paper. We see that one too, we quite sure we use that as an example. Do you guys also do drywall? We do. Yep. Um, that's a big one too, you know, tax hole and drywall. You want it textured? Do you want it painted? I mean, those are three separate stages of a repair. You know, I understand not everybody's a contractor, but it's also our responsibility as agents representing somebody. Spend some time, educate yourself on some of the stuff. You've got to have some general knowledge on all the stuff. But in my opinion, there's just no way around that. You can't cop out of that. You have to bring that value to the front. Um, I think probably the best thing that I would like to do next uh, is just kind of go to some Q&A. I know it's probably the last class of the day, so we kind of want to get out of here before rush hour. But any questions, concerns on how to better write a binger or what we see that's working more often? <clears throat> so do you want like additional stickers, say, um, say do you guys do mold? Um, so say there is an item, do you guys want additional stickers to make an estimate, or do you guys just go off the binger? Um, like, how do you guys justify? So what we do is you upload the binger, um, and you upload the inspection to the site. We provide the estimate based on that inspection and the binger. So the more detailed that inspection is, the more photos that can be provided, the better we can do our job. There's a lot of times that it's a no bid, meaning we can't bid off what the inspector's notes are, or the lack of pictures that there are. Because um, we've seen handwritten on the phone. What's your turnaround time? 24 hours, you upload the binger inspection, you get a free line item estimate within 24 hours. If you do it after five o'clock on Friday, you get back bid until Monday. Someone else you want to say anything? Can you tip rates? Yep. Yep, we do charge $100 if you're asking to have the entire inspection summary bid and there's no binger. Usually we tell people that, and guess what happens? Then the binger comes back, see attached inspection summary. <laughs> it takes a lot of man hours and resources to bid an entire inspection summary. And this is a business, we're not running a charity. Every time we bid the full inspection, how many times have you been awarded those jobs? Once, but then it was like 3,500 and went down to 400 after negotiations were done. Or batting averages, not the same thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, because it's not just us. There's there's other resources out there that provide a similar service. Um, utilize this stuff. This is key. You know, the, that's what's in that video. Like that's why it evolved. Because every time I present a binger, clients like, all right, that's awesome. Like there's a lot of work to be done here. Great. After they get over the emotional, my house is perfect. I can't believe they're asking for this. They're terrible human beings. Then is, well, what's it going to cost? Like, what's it cost to make this problem go away? We have we. No excuse now. There's companies out there that do good for you guys. Provide that. Um, some of our most successful agents, they're not presenting a binger and an inspection to a buyer. They're not getting a binger put together until that's accompanied with an estimate. So now they're sitting down with their repair request they're going to build, the inspection, and that estimate. So now the buyer can see, okay, well, this is important. Oh, I actually didn't think that was important, but this is expensive. Okay, let me do that. The other thing that stops you guys from doing is quoting. Every everybody assumes we're contractors too, right? Yeah. How many times do your buyers look at you and go, "What's that cost?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm a real estate agent. Like that. So now you you can have that and bring that to the client. Now, um, doesn't that put us like in liability? Because are we supposed to like recommend like two or three people to take stuff? I couldn't speak to that. I mean. Some would maybe argue yes, but they're making a decision, right? They're, you're not, it's not a child that you're forcing to use a company. So, I hear that all the time with, like, with lenders and whatever, like, we should provide them with two plumbers. I don't work with two lenders, I only want because I don't trust my people. Right. So, I don't know, maybe I'm not the best person to answer that. So, why don't you plug? Yes. I know I came in late, sorry. No, no, that's fine. Um, you, you guys are, uh, Contracting company. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're real estate agents as well. Okay. We built this company out of the need to serve our clients, and that's how this evolved. Um, 
So you're all licensed. Yeah, licensed licensed farming. Yeah, licensed farming for. Uh, ever worked with any flippers or anything? We don't do any remodels. So this is all we do with Yep. This is what makes us different. I'm not going to drop names, but when everybody else is busy doing flips and remodels, which is right now, there's been some other companies that have marketed, hey, we'll get you a free estimate in 24 hours. Well, seven days later, they may or may not even respond. So we're very conscious of that. We also know that don't get upset. We know that a lot of times our estimate is just used to negotiate a credit. How often do I use us to negotiate a credit? I think we've only gotten like two jobs from you. <laughs> How many do you bid every week? Two a week, probably on average? Oh, like, yeah, two a week, probably. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. yeah, the company was built to better help us serve our clients, and uh, it's kind of evolved from that. So, uh, back to the, some of the stuff that we see more. Uh, one of the successful agents, um, a lot of them even on the seller side now. So you're representing a seller, you've received a VIN during inspection. Before they sit down and present with the seller, you're getting an estimate for someone, from us, somebody else, to now take all of that documentation to the seller. Like now you've just eliminated multiple sleepless nights. In the past, we always saw people, you'd submit the VIN during inspection to the seller, and now the seller stews over it. The seller's forced to go try to track down contractors. Why? Because we're being lazy? Because we've been told, like, oh, you shouldn't refer people because if you refer them, then that's a better collection of you. Like, we've all heard this. Poor way to do things, man. Like, you are there to guide the client through the transaction. Be a resource, be the tools. Like, you are their toolbox. So sit down with them, have that estimate right there. I think this is as important on sellers, almost more so than buyers, because a lot of times sellers will agree to repairs and then they figure out what it costs. And then what happens? They do the cheapest, shoddiest, they hire the cheapest guys to do the repairs because they actually didn't want everyone to agree to it in the first place. But now they're committed. They're not committed to that. So does that estimate come with like, is it just that estimate? Say this is like $60, $60 to fix. Is there another service charge? Like you know, Anything under there? 500, there's a service charge. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's, I mean, yeah, that, that's kind of rule of thumb. If it's something down the street, uh, it's an agent that do this a lot every now and then <laughs> they have some customer service too, right? So but what's the no, so seventy right now? Sixty five. So over five hundred six or under five hundred sixty five, over five hundred for whatever it costs. Mm -hmm. Any questions guys on, on how we can help you better through the vendor process? We see a ton of vendors. Vendor I try to make that as easy as I think everybody in Arizona can come and do repair dot com. Spell with a Z. What's your website? Spud. S P U T. Now, do you remember that conversation? Yeah. What about Vinzer repair? Oh, there's no way that's available. Yeah. Oh my God. George comes out like, dude, how did you get that domain? Here's what else. You know, there's a lot of agents that in my home group that have used us. Again, you know, I don't. I don't want this to be so much about us as, as a vendor partner with my home group. It's like we, this works. Like we have seen, this has made my life a whole lot easier. It gives us more control as agents of the transaction. Maybe that's just me, but I want to control every piece of that transaction I can. This is just another way for you to do so. We try to make your life as agents much easier too. We'll coordinate all the scheduling. Like try to have a single point of contact. I have a question here. I'm trying to put these pieces Maybe. together and I'm just not following. Sure. So I've got a buyer um, I'm working with. So I'm just kind of making an example, right? Sure. Got a buyer I'm working with. We're working through the bidzer. Um, they're trying to figure out what they want to ask for, what they don't want to ask for. We go to you for the stuff that they really want to get taken care of now. At what point, how do you guys get that business back? It's not the seller is not required to use you as a fixer. So how No, that's, and that happens quite a bit too. Okay. Um, the buyer's agent will, will quote it, gives a buyer idea, they submit it when they submit their vendor. And a lot of, um, sometimes the selling agent, listing agent will call us to do the repairs and sometimes they call somebody else. But we just mostly come come at it more as a value add okay. for, your, for, your, for your buyer and also for the seller so they can kind of have an idea. And it's also helped people get a higher um, credit as well. You know, if, if you say, oh, you know, I can maybe it's gonna be like $1,500 and it's $3,500, 
you know, buyer closes, has to like, okay, I'm ready to have repairs done, and they find out that they're 2,500 short, yeah. they're, they're gonna be thinking, well, you told me, you told me it was only gonna cost me this much. I mean, and that, unfortunately, that does happen. And the only person that makes look bad is you. So now you're the losing referral business. Because you're like, oh yeah, my agent was great, but now my these repairs cost me so much more than she said. Yeah, and I think a, a big reason, so like you said, it, it's kind of by design it forces us to stay very competitive in the marketplace with our pricing and the quality of services we provide. Because if you're providing that estimate from us to a seller, we're hoping that the seller decides to use us. Well, what's the seller gonna to decide to do with that home? The cheapest guy. And if most sellers, in my experience, will use the quote that was provided from the buyer. Because now if there's a re-inspect and there's a question on, oh, well, this wasn't repaired correctly. What's the seller say? You chose the guy. It was your guy. Take it up with him. That's exactly what happens. Like, I'm not gonna say we don't have go-backs, but very, very few go-backs. I'm very proud of our team for that. Exactly that conversation. Like, hey, sorry, they decided you guys need to. What's do you have up? an example of one of your emails you guys sent back as a quote, and that could have possibly helped us with green screen? Katie? You know, another way to utilize these guys is to, when a seller is prepping the home, it doesn't just have to be vendor stuff. I've used them in my own home as well. That's, you know, that's kind of their bread and butter, but I mean, there's still many other things that have basic stuff that is similar to a vendor repair or prepping a listing for a sale, they're really a resource for that too. Can you have a quote as that one? I'm sorry? You just took a picture? Yeah, that's what I did. I had, they replaced a fixture above my front door, so I just took a picture of this one. I put it into a document, made a PDF, and uploaded it to the team, so. So super slick. You guys do the home inspection too? We don't do home inspections okay. right now. Uh, it's uh, that's probably the, the next evolution, just because we unfortunately see the difference between quality home inspections. Right, but I guess too, you know, like you know, we're talking about people getting a home ready for sale. You know, you go and you go, okay, well, you know, it's real hot stuff here. You know, I don't want to point it out to you. I mean, I you know, so I can, I can, like I can come punch list? with my sellers and say, hey, you know what? Sure. There, there's a lot of fear. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. You know, the nice thing. About